Hi, I'm Paige from Pagey Draw, and welcome to my video tutorials. In this tutorial, I will be teaching you how to color a chibi. Now that the fine lining is complete, you can start on coloring. So, what I usually start with when I'm coloring something is I always use the lightest colors first. Um, so, the lightest thing on Yan is her skin, so I'm going to color her skin first. Um, I find that most people say that you need to start with the lighter colors first, but um, I find that when you use the lighter colors first, it only works if you're quickly coloring, and since in my tutorials I have to scan everything step by step, I've been doing the darker colors first, so then when you put the lighter colors on top, it blends in a little bit easier, and apparently it saves you, um, it saves you ink, so you end up using less. Um, but it doesn't really matter if you start with the darker colors first or the lighter colors first. Um, I kind of do a mixture of both, so sometimes I'll start with the darker colors, sometimes I'll start with the lighter colors. But usually I always start with um, doing a little bit of shading in a pinkish color. And usually I use R20. Um, sometimes I'll use like a little bit of E04, but... It gets a little bit too dark sometimes, and um, I just don't want this drawing to look that pink. So I'm just going to use a little bit of R20, and if you use my application for drawing tutorials, um, you'll notice that sometimes in my drawing steps I will have to do two colors at once. And that is because you have to blend really quickly with some colors. So hopefully the video will better explain that. So I'm just going in small spots. Again, I'm just using tiny itty bitty bits of pink right now. I'll probably put more in later. I'll just do a little bit of pink on the fingertips because it's cute. Now, find if you do a big blotch of a darker color, you should be putting down a lighter color first. Just because when if you quickly put down a lighter color and make sure it's still drying a bit, and then you put on the darker color over top, the darker color will kind of seep and leak into it, and then it blends in better. So that's why I'm not really doing all of the pink coloring that I usually do just at the moment. Um, so now I have just a little bit of outline around areas where I want it shaded. And I'm just going to go in with a lighter color pink, even though the color I use is V0000. And technically it's a violet, but I find it looks, it's the right shade of pink. Um, I think the R40 is a little bit too pink. I don't know. I'm just going to put a little bit on the knees, just because since this is a really light color, it blends in with the colors over it, so don't have to worry too, too much. And since the R20, I only did a thin layer of it, I really don't care how fast I'm coloring right now. But later it will matter. Um, and also, when you have lighter color markers, the tips of them, you'll notice that they're gray, and that's just because sometimes you'll color over something like pencil or marker, and it doesn't mean that the marker will color things gray, it's just it gets dirty easily. So right now I'm just using E0000, so e four zeros. And that's just my base color. And I find it works good as a base for light skin colors, just because even though it's too light, um, later when you color it in, it ends up working as a good color. Right now my marker is dying a little bit. Um, uh, one thing to be careful about when your marker is dying 
and you just quickly have to color something in. You have to be really careful around fine liner or again if there's something with pencil because you have to press harder when the marker is dying and then it will smudge much easier like even though the fine liner is um, it resists getting smudged by the marker sometimes it will just because you're pressing really hard on it so it smudged a little bit there Another thing you can do is if you have a light color, you can, if you're lucky and you have the shade darker, like one shade darker, so this is E4 zeros, I have an E3 zeros, what I could do is I can put down the colorless blender marker and then put the E3 zeros over top of it and it'll recreate a color very similar. I think I'm going to end up doing so I'm just going to put down, so I'm just going to, the color of the spender picks up on other colors so I always kind of color in the side when I use it before I lay it down just in case there's another color like blue and then I try to color the skin I don't want blue to show up. So, I just put the easier zone down and as you can see it's the same color since I put the other marker down. So that's the base of the skin. Um, now I'm going to use the E000 as, um, I'm just going to use it to shade a bit. And this is where you have to start coloring a little bit quicker. So right now I'm doing the face and I'm just doing it around the eyes and whatnot. I'm quickly coloring that in and now I'm going to quickly go in with my R20 to make some blush. And as you can see it's not as dark as it was coloring before just because the pencils, sorry the marker is still kind of wet. And then afterwards you go in with a D00 again so it blends even more. And now there's like a big line there and since my other marker just died, I'm just going to go in with zero. Um, if it's, if you're coloring something with a darker color, you can't really use E0, sorry, um, the colorless blender as a replacement just because darker colors, you'll notice it more because this marker picks up the pigment and then it kind of makes things look funny sometimes. So um, you can really only use this as a blender if you're using lighter colors. Or if it's a darker color, you can use it to kind of pick up some of the ink, but it doesn't do a good job blending dark colors. So that's why it's really only good for skin, in my opinion. Um, I'm just gonna go in the face with the blushes, with the light pink. Um, I find that the, the pink really helps because what ends up happening with the um, E0 markers is they're not, they make the skin, a, it makes it an awkward tint and then you either have to blend in like a brownish color with it or a pinkish color with it depending on what you want your skin tone to be but I used to just straight up use the E markers and sometimes it works out alright but other times it's kinda like you need another color in there because skin color has different tones under it so like if someone has white skin they might have um, a pink tone in it, or with me, I have an olive tone, so like green, but that doesn't really work out with anime drawings. So I end up using pink or a brown shade, not the E zeros, because just using the E zeros don't work out. You have to use higher pigments. So again, I'm just going in with the darker 
skin color, so E000. Zero, zero, just a tiny little bit, not much. It's just to add a little bit of color to the skin, like darker color. So you don't want the skin to be super, super pale. Um, it depends on the style, but um, I started coloring my skin a little bit darker than I used to just because people would say that they look like vampires, and I'm like, no, not supposed to be. Uh, once you get all the shading done, um, right now I just finished coloring up the skin. Um, sometimes you can use different markers, so the markers I use you don't really have to use for the skin. It's just, um, um, this is what I use for Yen. Sometimes I'll use E21 or A04 on her skin, but uh, I think I'm just going to leave her skin like this for this tutorial. So, so now the skin's colored. So now that the skin is colored, um, even though the dress is a lighter color, I like just doing the hair. <sighs> I don't know. I have, I usually stick to the same order with coloring just because usually it's the skin and the hair that are the lightest. Because um, usually I draw characters with lighter hair colors. But, yeah, it's different. But I'm still going to color the hair next. So with Nyan's hair, I start with R27 as the base. It's a very bright red, like really bright. And I find that the brighter markers they color way easier, so you don't have to um, you don't have to go at it as long. Like when you're coloring something like really light blonde hair, I find that you have to blend it more and stuff like that. But luckily, this is a little bit easier. And some people say that when you're coloring, you should be doing really, really, really long strokes and color quickly. But I find that, at least for me, it's easier to do really short strokes and color really fast. They say long strokes, so then it doesn't um, doesn't make any lines, like it'll blend better with longer strokes, but I find as long as you're coloring really quickly, it's fine. Especially if you do base colors. Since I always do base colors, it doesn't really matter if you see um, little lines in the base. And the color is really solid right now, so I don't know. It just depends on how fast you color and what your technique is, so. Maybe it's different. Almost done, the base. Yan's hair, I have to be really, really careful just because since it's a darker color, if I get it in the skin, it's super noticeable. And that's happened before, but. Oh well. Then. So, now I have the base of the hair done. And now I'm going to go in with my darkest color, which is R89. Um, I think Nyan's hair, the base is really easy to get done. It's the blending that's really hard with her hair if you use the same colors as I do. Um, just because, as you can see, the jump from colors is really significant. Because I didn't want her to have like super, super bright red hair. I like mixing in um, more, like, not as bright, vibrant colors. In my opinion, makes it look nicer. But, that's just my opinion. And then lately, when I color hair, I've been doing little bubbles. Because I think they look cute. Coloring her in your ear. <laughs> I 
right now it is super, super weird looking, but once you start doing the shading, uh, the hair looks much nicer. But this is how I start it. Because those bubbles look so out of place. But just, just, just take your time. Usually when you blend something so dark with something so light, you'd have to go faster, but I don't even worry about it because as long as you get it done in the end, it's okay. practically done but um one thing that I should also mention when you're coloring something with a really dark marker you have to make sure um that you don't smudge your hand in it because I this always happens with me when I draw um sometimes I'll get marker all over on my hand just because what ends up happening is you'll color over something and then um the marker sometimes rubs off just because if it's still wet then it's gonna rub off and I don't really care if it gets on my hand but sometimes it'll smudge on the drawing and then you'll be like oh no the drawing it's getting ruined and it's really upsetting so now I have the darker color down and now I go in with my mid color, which isn't very different, and I quickly color in where the shiny spots are, just really, really quickly, and then I really quickly do circles with a dark color, like the darkest color, and then it ends up blending really well, and then I use my base color again. Uh, so now that the hair is blending it a bit and just a quick summary of what I did to blend it was I just quickly went in with a um, R29 then quickly went in with R89 and then quickly went in with R27 and that's how I blended in and that is literally you have to be super fast with that because since it's such a dark color you're blending it with um, you just have to be super fast and then it blends with a light color um, if it dries, then it's not going to blend at all. So now I'm just going to go in with a white gel pen, and I usually draw a couple stars for the shiny parts in the hair, because I think it's cute, and then I do a bunch of little circles. And dots, yeah. Different sizes, it makes it look more interesting. And then it looks super cute. And that's so the hair is done now. Um, now I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna color the dress. So, um, Yan's dress, a lot of people were wondering how to color it, and it's actually not that difficult. Um, so, I'm just gonna quickly do it. Um, since it's two colors, you have to color it a little bit differently than normal. You can't just go with a base color and then go in with a paint color and then go with another shading color or whatever. You can't do that. Um, we start with a base on the top. Now her dress is gray, and it's warm gray. So this one is W3, that's what I'm starting with. But this is too light. Just by the way. So, so you just kind of go downwards like that. So just quickly. Just color it. And I'm using this color just because it blends with the pink color that I use. Uh, the first drawing of Nyanya did, I made her dress gray and blue sorry, gray and red, but I kind of, I don't really like black and red together, so, like, the hair's fine, because it's a hair color, but, I don't know, for clothes, I don't like it, but, anyways, so now I've went to a more, um, brownish pink, I don't know, so, 
Now I'm just doing the same thing, but on the bottom. Same thing I did with the gray. And I'm going up. So the gray is blending. So the gray I went down to here, and the pink I'm going up to here. So it blends in the middle, and then it, I don't know, it looks cool. Really, it's not that difficult once you've tried it once. <laughs> but at first, it's like, oh no! If I kept her dress red, it would be much harder. Just because red has a strong pigment, gray has a strong... Like, the dark gray has a strong pigment, so it's, like, more difficult. And I'm going in with a warm gray 5. And the pink, by the way, was U04. I don't remember if I said it or not. So now that the um, darker gray grays down, I can start shading the gray areas, so I'm going in with W6 now, which is just one shade darker than the W5. Yeah. Going over with the W5 again. Then I'm going to use this E04, shade in the pink areas, you know, it's the same color that I used, but that's okay. And there was a little bit of smudge there, so I'm just going over it, and then I'll add it in with fine liner, you'll see in a moment. Um, I'm going in with the fine liner just quickly, just because of this spot here. There we go. Just quickly. Uh, now I'm going to start on the boot. So I'm just going to start with the W6. And I'm going to then shade it with toner grays. Just quickly going in here. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So this is just the base color for the boot. I'm going to use T6. Yep. And yeah, boots, I kind of just kind of... As long as it's a dark color, then it's okay. Their boots are supposed to be black. But never color anything completely black, unless you're doing something like manga pages, where everything is black and white. Um, reason being is just, there is no completely black thing. And it also makes it more interesting if you have different shades of gray. Uh, I'm just going to go in with T8. Nah. When you start coloring with dark grays, it's hard to see the fine line. Okay. Almost done this. Now I'm going to go with W6 again to blend in all of those grays together. Now I have really dark boots for yeah, and I'm going to go in again here, just because I want it to be shaded nicely. Just lightly going in. Okay, now the dress is colored and the shoes are colored now. Uh, I just have to color the eyes. So I'm going to, her eye color is Y000 for the base. Yan's eyes, in my opinion, are quite easy. Um, at first, it was kind of hard to find the right shades of yellow, but now I figured it out. Uh, now I'm going in with YR31. Just, And the YR31 only goes in the top half of the eye. And now I'm using YR23. And since it's still wet, it's going to blend in nicely. Again, only coloring in the top half of the eye. I'm going to let it dry just a little bit as I put away my 
Sorry for the markers. So, the reason why I'm letting it dry is so then the colors go on a little bit better. Uh, I'm going to go in with YR23 again. Now that it's dried a bit, it'll go on darker. And then the last color that I use on Anne's eyes is E23. Just because. I recently I discovered that yellow contacts are really creepy looking, in my opinion. And it's the um, yellowy brown ones that look nice, so I figure I'll interpret that to Nyan's design, so then, I don't know. Because I also think of how things would look in person. Um, so now I'm just drawing it a bit, and then you just do the shine in the eye. So I'm doing a little star in one corner. And you can do star, or you can do dot, or whatever you want. You don't even have to do shine, if that's where you want to do. That's the way, but that's what I do. So I have a star, a dot, and just a small little line on the bottom. And that's what I do for the eyes. And now the chibi's colored, so this is the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching my video tutorial on how to color a chibi. If you're interested in any of the supplies that I used in my video today, um, check out my store, shop.patreon.com. If you're looking for a large community which will give you lots of insight and feedback on your artwork, please check out Pagey Draws' Facebook page.